In the last 15 years, something extraordinary has happened to British high streets. Well-known shops such as Woolworths, Topshop and BHS have disappeared and have been replaced by barber shops, nail salons and in London in particular, American sweet shops. In many British high streets, it's now not unusual for there to be dozens of barbers and nail salons, while in Oxford Street in London, once Britain's biggest shopping location has become proliferated by American sweet shops. But what exactly is going on here? Why are there so many of these shops? After all, how can there possibly be a need for so many barbers? And how do many of them stay in business when they often seem empty? And think about it, how is it possible for a sweet shop to afford an Oxford Street rent when the big brands simply cannot. You may have heard the rumours that actually many of these shops are not legit businesses and are instead simply a front for money laundering, where millions of pounds of dirty money is funnelled through them every year. But how true is this? And if it is true, then how do they possibly get away with it? So in this video, we take a look at the dark truth that sits behind the British High Street. Go back 20 years ago and British high streets looked really different than they do now. They were full of shops offering a variety of products and services. Shops like Dixon's, CNA, Littlewoods, Debenhams, MFI, Woolworths, Blockbusters, the list goes on and on. During the noughties, these shops began to vanish from British high streets, chiefly unable to cope with the surge in online shopping, offering customers cheaper prices and more convenience. High streets across the UK began to look derelict and many said that it was the death of the British high street, but there was a saviour around the corner. Gradually, barbershops, nail salons and sweet shops began to open. In particular, Turkish barbers, Vietnamese nail salons and American candy shops. The British high street suddenly saw these shops spring up in their droves and it's now not unusual to find local high streets almost entirely dominated by them. And many people have found themselves asking, how can my town possibly need so many barbers and nail salons? Surely there are now more than enough shops to satisfy demand and yet they seem to keep opening. Indeed, barbers are currently the fastest growing sector in the economy. More than 2,300 open this year alone. The latest data compiled by the National Hair and Beauty Federation shows that between 2014 and 2019, there was a 64% increase in the number of barber shops in the UK. And what about London's biggest high street, Oxford Street? Why does Oxford Street now have over 20 American sweet shops on one road alone? They're all selling the exact same thing. How can they possibly afford to pay the rent? For years, there have been rumours that actually there is a dark truth behind the growth of these shops. And that is that really, they're not shops at all. And actually they are simply a front for a global money laundering operation. So now let's take a look at the evidence for this and see exactly how they get away with it. We should of course start by saying that there are many legitimate barbershops and nail salons in the UK. There are thousands of hardworking shop owners delivering good service to their customers and making their money in a fair and honest way. And of course, it's not surprising that shops offering a service, i.e. stuff you can't buy online like a haircut, are more likely to be successful than traditional shops selling products. But many of them are not honest and are involved in money laundering. So what exactly is money laundering and how does your local high street play its part? Well put simply, money laundering is a way of making dirty money clean. That means that money acquired through illegal means such as drugs money, arms money, money from people trafficking can be cleaned so that it can appear as legitimate income and enter the economy without a trace of its true roots. This is necessary because almost all illegal trade and activity is conducted in cash. This ensures that the authorities cannot have sight or control of it. There are no bank accounts, no audit trails, no receipts. The big problem with cash, however, is that it's more or less impossible to spend large amounts of it in modern economies. If you want to buy a car, a house, a yacht, this all has to be done via bank accounts and money transfers. And so if you have one million pounds in cash, you'll find that actually you're not that rich because you can't spend it that easily. 
nor can you transfer it electronically to anyone else without the bank asking questions. And you can't simply go and pay this money into a bank account. You'll be asked for evidence of where the money came from and how you acquired it, questions that you probably don't want to answer if the money came from drugs. Nor can you simply walk around with large amounts of cash without people asking questions. If you're ever stopped by the police with a large amount of cash in your possession, you'll probably find your way onto the police station to be quizzed about how it came in your possession. And this is where shops like barbers and nail salons come in. Because they offer a perfect, untraceable way to wash dirty money. But just how do they do it? Well firstly, many of these shops operate on a cash basis, meaning that there are no audit trails or accounts to follow. They simply have a cash in and cash out figure at the end of the day. Many barbers and nail salons are cash only, and if they do have a card machine, you may be told that it's broken. And secondly, because these shops sell a service and not a product, it's impossible to assess the money they're making. Unlike a shop selling products where you would see receipts for what was purchased and then what they sold them for so you can check whether the profit at the end of the day is legitimate, barbershops and nail salons skip that process. This means that barbershops operate primarily in cash with no paper trails, no receipts and no products or goods to account for. Because of this, it's almost impossible to assess whether these shops are making a legitimate amount of money. If a barber shop declares that it makes 10,000 pounds in one month, how can you challenge that? After all, there's no products, no receipts, there's just cash in and out at the end of the month. And you also don't know what they charge their customers. So you can't even try and compare the number of customers against income because each customer may get a different service which costs a different price entirely at the discretion of the barber. Therefore, if a barber's, for example, seems to be making too much money, they can simply answer, well, it was a busier month. Many of the customers wanted a full shave and there's no way of the authorities knowing what each customer was actually charged. And therefore, there's no way of knowing whether at the end of the month, the barbershop is declaring the right amount. Think about it, when was the last time you got a receipt when you went to the barbershop or the nail salon? What all of this means is that these shops have the opportunity to launder huge amounts of money each month. A barbershop, one of the ones you've probably seen that never really seems to have any customers, may only take £1,000 a month in legitimate revenue, but may put £5,000, £10,000, £15,000 into the bank account each month. But what about the American sweet shops? How do they get away with it? Well, it's even simpler. They don't put an advertised price on any item in the shop. Go in one now and you'll see hundreds of products without price tags. This means that they can easily evade any allegations of wrongdoing. So if they seem to be making too much money, how can you quiz them? There's no prices on anything, they can just claim that that's what they charged. So how exactly does this dirty money actually end up in the barber shop? Well, it's probably easier than you would expect. They literally just put it in the till. Several hundreds of pounds a day is added into the cash register and then declared at the end of each month as legitimate income. In many cases, they're not even subtle about it. I can remember being in a barber shop once, which I won't name for legal reasons, and a somewhat shady looking character came in and literally put a bundle of cash in the till and walked out. You may have seen similar on your high street. The barber shop, of course, gets a cut, anything between 20 to 45%, and then simply pays or transfers the money back in the form of supposed wages or bank transfers for goods to the person who wanted the money washed. It is, in many ways, the perfect crime. A cash-only business with no audit trails, no receipts. No way of knowing whether the money is legitimate, where it came from, or where it ends up. And all of this is a massive problem in Britain. In fact, Britain is the money laundering capital of the world. Incredibly, nearly 40% of the world's global dirty money is funneled through Britain. The Home Office, Treasury and Serious Fraud Office claim that more than £150 billion of dirty cash is cleaned every year in Britain alone. A lot of that money, in fact most of it, comes from overseas. Most of it is from Russia, but also from mainland Europe and the Middle East, Albania, Turkey and Iran. 
A big chunk of this money is laundered via advanced, high finance schemes and via advanced technologies such as cryptocurrency. But a sizable amount of the 150 billion is cleaned in local British high streets in every town and city in plain sight. So how do they get away with it? The incredible thing about all of this is that it's all so obvious. It's literally in your face every day. Walk down to your local high street now and you'll probably see it. We all know that if the top brands can't survive paying Oxford Street rents, then how can an unbranded shop selling sweets that seemingly never has any customers? Even Westminster Council openly admit this. They say that the sweet shops are far from regular and legitimate businesses and say that they simply have too few customers to cover rents. So if it's that obvious, then how come they get away with it? Well, firstly, as we've said, it's really hard to prove. As these are mostly cash businesses selling services and not goods, there's no audit trails and no receipts. And therefore, what can you do? HMRC would literally have to stand outside every barbershop in Britain, count the number of customers going in, and then ask each customer how much they paid for their service, how much they tipped, to then get a view on whether the business was legitimate. And with every high street seemingly having dozens of them, they simply cannot do that. And the landlords of the buildings don't care either. You see, landlords have to pay taxes and charges even if their buildings are empty. So they often rent out the space to any applicant, regardless of its quality or legitimacy, they're really not interested. And there's a reason why Britain is a target. And that's because it's incredibly easy to set up a company in the UK. Any person can do it, any nationality, for just a few pounds. And many of these shops and companies have dodgy setups. They can be registered on company's house under the name of a fake director. There can also be opaque shell companies, so it becomes hard to trace exactly what they're earning. Companies can open and close before they even file accounts. And where there is an investigation or enforcement action, the owners simply shut up shop, register a new company and open somewhere else. It's therefore practically impossible to try and follow the trail of these money and who is responsible for doing it. And there's another slightly perverse point here, which is that these money launderers do actually generate money in the UK economy. Much of the money that they wash is declared and they do pay tax on it. And when the money is in the UK economy, it's often spent here. Houses, cars, goods are all bought using this washed money which of course is taxed. So there are many top London properties, millions of pounds that have been bought with dirty money and everyone knows it. And so if the authorities were to actually crack down on this, they would in a way be shooting themselves in the foot as these dirty businesses do generate millions of pounds every year for the UK economy. And it's also the case that without these shops, the high street would be more or less empty. And so maybe it's better to have at least something there, generating some money for the UK economy, even if the money has been acquired through illegal means. The true scale of money laundering on the British high street is unknown. That's literally the point of it. And so maybe what we're left with is the perfect crime. Millions and millions of pounds of dirty cash is washed in the UK, in local high streets, in plain sight, every day. And it's a crime that's almost impossible to prove. And so next time you're out shopping on your local high street and you find yourself asking, why are there so many barbers and nail salons? Well, now you may know the reason why.